Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome to lesson number 8 of this Planet Coaster Top Tips for Readers and Series and today we are looking at park entrances. We've got loads more Planet Coaster content to come so of course make sure you are subscribed if you aren't already but otherwise thank you so much for joining this one. Uh, so this is going to be broken up into the two usual things, basic and pro, and we're going to be looking completely at park entrances. Now we're not looking at how you decorate these in this episode, we're going to be focusing more on how you configure these. So without further ado, let's get started. So here is a real quick entrance area template that I've created, but of course don't let this define what yours should look like, because this is just supposed to demonstrate what your entrance area plaza looks like rather than tell you how to lay it out and so on. I mean entrance areas come in all shapes and all sizes so just keep that in mind. Now no matter how you lay out your plaza and how your entrance area looks they should always have the same things and these are somewhere to buy tickets but remember that self-service is also a thing nowadays. You're going to need two plazas, one either side of your turnstiles and then of course you're going to need your turnstiles themselves. Uh, you need security checkpoints if this is appropriate for your park. You also need toilets either side of your park boundary. You're going to need some sort of gift shop, food shop, drink shop, maybe include some kind of games as well. Uh, you're going to need guest services and you're going to need cash machines. Um, and then don't forget as well, you've got some other optional stuff as well. So you're going to need somewhere to buy annual passes. Uh, you might want somewhere to rent lockers and strollers. You might also want to sell parking tickets, so you're going to need to include those. Uh, you may also include some telephones. Remember that not everybody's got a mobile phone, so you might want to include a phone or, or two. Uh, and you might also consider somewhere to buy fast passes. Now, you typically find this in amongst your guest services or where you find annual passes, but you could include a separate shop if that's what you wanted to do. So remember, though, that your plaza area does need to be an appropriate size for the number of guests that you're going to have. And remember that this area is going to be heavily used by every single person that enters and leaves your park at least twice a day. So you're going to need to accommodate for the flow of guests. So these need to be wide. And this uh, template that I've done here... I've used all of the tricks and, te and techniques of every episode up till now, so there's nothing new that, that's in here. Uh, the way that I've laid out the plaza, the way that I've done the buildings and, ev and everything is all the same. Don't forget as well that you also need to allow flow through your turnstiles as well. So depending on the size of your park, this is going to be somewhere between 1 per 1,000 guests or 1 per 2,500 guests. And it completely depends on the turnstiles that you're going to use. Remember that the more efficient your turnstile, the more people it can throw through really quickly. So if people are buying things on mobile phones or if you're using high technology, for example, you can get away with having fewer turnstiles. Uh, but typically speaking, I tend to go for one per 1,000. So if I know that I've got a park capacity of about 20,000 guests, I'm going to want 20 turnstiles. Uh, and also remember as well that your ticket offices need to follow... Uh, that whole same formula as well. So you need to allow around one window per 1,000 guests, remembering that some of your guests are going to buy tickets in advance. They'll have them on their mobile phones. They'll have printed it at home, that sort of stuff. Uh, and as a general rule of thumb, your office should be around two meters squared for every person that's working, uh, but also allow extra room in your office for movement within the office and also storage space as well. So remember, you need somewhere to store all of those tickets. And also your toilets should be the correct size as well. So uh, in episode one, we said that the toilets should be around two meters per cubicle, um, and so that's what I've done here. Uh, so you've got your, your, your toilet cubicle, which is long and thin rather than fat and wide. So now that we've looked at all of these in principle, let's actually build some of the stuff that you're going to need. So that's a lot of information then that we've just thrown at you, and you're now probably sitting there thinking, how do I even begin to do any of that? Like... Where do I even start? So let's go ahead and build some of the stuff that you're going to need in, in your entrance plaza together. And of course, when it comes to the basic level, we don't use ThingMaker's Toolkit because uh, console players don't have access to it and new players is probably a little bit daunting. So let's keep this nice and simple and let's just use the stuff that comes through. So the first thing that I always do is I grab myself an archer and you would have seen us do this loads of times. You would have seen us do it in other videos, other creators do it. And the reason we do that is because it gives us a sense of scale. It gives us uh, an idea of how, how things, how big things should be. 
So the first thing we need on, on our um, turnstile then is some kind of base. So within the art shapes, there's plenty of ones that you can use. They typically tend to be uh, rectangular, right? So uh, this one's probably a, a really good start. Um, I just color it gray because you tend to find that they are gray, right? So now we need to have the, the arms that, that stick out. So there's plenty of things that you could use. Sometimes you can probably get away with using the screen mount wall, wall mount. Uh, sunk in doesn't always give the, the the right thing there are other items as well if you prefer to use it you know there's beams that you can use in the in the building set so you've got things like under the walls uh, you've got uh, these kind of beams they tend to be a bit too thick but you can use them you know it depends on it depends on your on your sense of scale uh, you can also use a bit of trickery um, with some other things you know there's there's items that are in here that that stick out and they're pointy and, and things. You know, you can use them. But what I tend to use in this instance is the, the good old snowman pipe. Uh, so, uh, there we go. Snowman pipe. There he is. Uh, and <laughs> I love using this because it's just so versatile. Like, I've used this, if you see the Raygate Lake series and uh, most recently Fundy Fun Spot. I use these as the hand dryer. Um... Thing. you know like you can you can sink you can sink it in and it looks like it's a, a funnel or a cone pointing down so you can use it as a hand dryer but if you turn it around then it also looks a bit like a turnstile so uh, we place one there and we're going to go ahead and place another one uh, like this whoops no wrong ro wrong rotation that rotation there we go uh, like that and then we're just going to rotate the same but the other way and in like that so you can now you can now see that it's starting to to get this idea of uh, a turnstile so we just need to we just need to really tidy this up um so i'm just going to take the advanced move i'm just going to move it down um, i'm going to take this advanced move uh, and I'm going to spin it. I'm going to turn the snap off. And spin this down this way. Like this. And just move it in. And then I'm just going to... Do you know what? I'm going to leave that one Leave that one like it is. They're not always a perfect, perfect triangle. Uh, so the next thing we need to do then is group these together so that we can move them. Uh, but we don't want our archer. So that's now movable because I've grouped it together. And of course, they have lights on it, right? So they have the the red the red and green lights. So we've got fairy lights. We've got string lights that, that can do that. So if we go into uh, our scenery options, go to props, lights, and we've got these. So we've got constant ones, uh, or we've got uh, the flashing ones. It's it's completely completely up to you. So you can see that we don't actually have anything smaller than a four but never fear we can sink this into there we go into the rectangle like this and we also want to change the top one which is yellow at the moment to red and the bottom one as green um whoops i've not actually put those together there we go and so then what we can do is we can copy so i've just done Control x on the keyboard uh, here copy the the rectangle that we've got and we can just shift that down slightly um so you can sort of blur out the uh, you can blur out the the bottom what i like to do personally here is actually make it a bit of a feature so i'm just going to move it aside a little bit move it to the right a little bit so it's now created a lip it's created a reason for you to have had that had that jutty out bit right um it's just about making it make sense because then you can also uh, color them. So I'm just going to highlight at the bottom and you can give them a slightly different color. There we go. And there you have it. A non theme makers toolkit kind of acceptable <laughs> turnstile. I mean, you could always just find one on the, on the workshop as well. There are some brilliant ones that are, that are out there. Uh, but ultimately what you're looking for is for your turnstiles to look a little bit like this. Uh, there we go. I'm just going to group these together. 
because it makes copying them across so much easier. There we go, like that. And we just highlight all of them again. These are really not in in a in a line, are they? <laughs> but you get you get the idea. Uh, let's uh, try and straighten these up, shall we? There we go. That's a bit better. Um, but don't forget that you're also going to need to leave some kind of space for your disabled guests. So um, what I like to do is is every, every so often just leave yourself one where you've got a gap and put in some kind of a fence. Uh, so the in-game fences, they, they work. I mean, it's down to you to decide what fence you use uh, and how you're going to decorate the, the entrance. Uh, but let's just take, uh, where's the smaller version? Um, this always escapes me because I, I always think they're down the bottom with these ones, but they're not, they are here. Um, so we're just going to leave ourselves a little fence like that, because that's then where you're going to uh, you're going to allow your wheelchairs wheelchairs to come through, and of course all of your turnstiles are manned, uh, so they're going to need some kind of staff that are, that are standing there. Um, I like to use the uh, the business people in the studios pack, but console players you can use uh, any other any other uh, figure that you've got. You could also probably find one as a blueprint as well. Uh, so if I find my business person, where are they? Uh, there they are, and just make sure that a line to surface is off, and just pop your staff down. So there you go, you've now got some kind of manned turnstiles. All you now need to do uh, is decorate around it, and however you want your turnstiles, turnstiles to look. So, uh, for example, you may decide that the roof on this is going to be uh, pointed, so you're going to have it as a pitched roof. I'm just going to use, actually, what's the most generic one uh, that everyone's got access to? It would be one of these, wouldn't it? Um, so, three, four. So that's four metres high. Like this. Uh, and I'm going to continue this brick wall. So, if I just type in brick. Wall pieces. Uh, where are they? There we go. And I'm just going to select this as a whoops as a group and then up and now I want a pointy roof uh, so I'm going to find that here I'm going to use the castle spire one and then I'm just going to take this out because I'm going to put these as, as pillars so let's bring in our pillars and I'm going to use the western the western set i think we we've used the western set in in these demos quite a lot right so uh, it just feels right that this park's going to end up being western themed uh so there we go one pillar there one pillar there just to support the roof um and then of course you might want to just include one in the middle like that just to just to double double pillar it and there you go so you've now you're now starting to get the idea of uh, the turnstiles and, and how they're going to look in amongst in amongst the buildings so now that we've looked at that let's have a look at the ticket offices so here we are at the ticket office then, and uh, I've already laid this out to the correct size and specification. So I want 10 windows in this, which means that this needs to be 20 meters wide. Uh, and I've also made it eight meters uh, deep, and that allows for movement within the office and, and everything. It's completely up to you whether you kit out inside, um, especially at the basic level. Uh, but of course, you just need to allow the space for it to, for it to feel real. So that's all I've done here. Next thing we need to do then is actually decorate it. So I'm not going to make this look very elegant like I've not done with any of the other stuff. I'm just going to make this look functional. So the first thing we need to do is make this an actual building, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my brick. Um, and I'm not going to delete the existing outline. Um, I'm just going to keep that there. But if I was to be really thorough, uh, then I would also remove the, the bit that I've already already laid down. I probably want some kind of overhang, uh, so let's just put in some kind of uh, roof ability. There we go, and then one there, and one there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the roof on um, because I'm I'm not going to decorate the the inside uh, for this one. So we're already using the the wood shingle uh, over on the turnstile, so it makes sense for us to use that here as well. So, uh, but not that one. Let's use the flat one, like so. I'm just going to put the roof on this way. 
and then this way. Okay, so I've got a real basic layout. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much how the, the tickets are going to look. The next thing I need to do then is grab myself an archer. And that's again for the first scale, so I know um, how high everything needs to be. And now that I've got my archer, I need to start placing windows. So I like to use uh, various different windows. I mean, it's, it's completely down to you what you use for the, for the theme. Uh, but I do particularly like this window because it's, it's not so tall and it's quite wide and it actually looks like a, a ticket office window. So I tend to line my window up with about the eye level of the, so the middle of the window uh, with the eye level of the archer. Um, and this is pretty much how I do it. I'll take the, the advanced move and make sure that the green arrow is pointing pretty much at his face <laughs> and then uh, I just place one there and remembering that it's two meters per desk so you're going to want two windows every four meters uh, which is pretty much like that and then we're going to need some kind of a windowsill so people like to lean uh, and you'll also find things like the card machines and, and whatever on there so let's go ahead and grab a beam Beam, beams are your friend. Uh, and I'm just going to use your advanced move. I'm just going to place this down. And I'm going to make sure that it's sticking out just enough for it to actually be a windowsill. Like that, and like that, and like that, and like that. Cool. So I'm just going to move our archer out of the way. We don't need him anymore. And what I now need to do is copy this completely across. But before I do, there's one last thing to do. Uh, we just need to put a canopy on. So I reckon we're going to go into uh, decorations, a canopy. And you can, again, it's up to you which you choose. Uh, it makes sense for us to use the western one, right? Because that's the one that we've already been, uh, already been using. So let's go ahead and put this on. So this is now looking relatively like a, a, a ticket office. Um, again, you can be far more glamorous with, with your design. But I'm now going to copy this across. So let's go for selecting... Uh, our canopy and then selecting everything else underneath it we've just captured some stuff behind it so let's just go ahead and take these away so a little trick now that I've got this uh, copied and it's copied on a grid I can now really easily and quickly copy these over and there we go we've got a really basic ticket office I mean it's it's up to you if you're going to kit out the inside um, you might consider using the shop fronts instead um, and there is a way that you can uh, sort of fudge it through so you can use the actual shop fronts if that's if that's what you want to do like this shop front shop front shop front shop front but you don't get as many windows um, so what you might then consider doing is rather than having them spaced like like we've got here uh, you might actually consider doubling up the windows and you can use offset in here so uh, you can make it look like the window is actually inside the ticket office like this and then like this um, or if you actually want to show the inside of an office then great even better you can then just take a beam and you can uh, this one will do split the no that's the wrong way <laughs> split uh, the actual window into two like this and like this and now you can make an actual window sill uh, so if we go like that and that we go that and that I'm gonna put our canopy on like that there we go so that's now looking pretty much like a, a, a ticket office right uh, now we just need to put some kind of windowsill in so we go for the windowsill there and this would now have some kind of signs so you might have your tickets or you may have whatever um now what i like to do in this one is either use the art shapes uh, to just to draw out some kind of a panel uh, so let's take the square art shape uh, where are you where are you there we go, square art shape. That's probably a bit too big, actually. That's that one, isn't it? Uh, aligned to surface. And I'm just going to make this one a real dark grey. Like this. And I'm just going to do it double width. And then down and down. So this would be almost like a price tariff or, or a poster. Um, and you can make it look like it's got writing. So if I take this one. I'm just going to bring this out slightly and uh, turn the angle snap off. And I'm going to move this down a little bit like this. 
going to make this uh, white. Oh, hang on, I need to place it first, don't I? Because it's because we've got a color bug. Uh, place it first, and then we can recolor it. There we go. Recolor it, and then you sink it all the way back, all the way down, and then just poke it out just ever so slightly. And then you do the same again with the next line down. And now you've got two. You can select both. And it should be easier then. Or it should get easier to start to put your extra lines in. Um, like so. And then... Oh, we'll actually do the four this time. Two, three, four. And then out just a little bit. I'm just going to move that one in like that. So now you can see you're starting to create writing. Um, now, another trick that you can use, and this is this is quite finicky, and I don't know how this behaves on a console, um, but you can sync uh, signs into the actual wall. So what I like to do here, take my theme sign, and I always use, I always use this one, um, or uh, this one. Try again. Uh, <laughs> so I like to use either the Western Metal sign or the smaller sign uh, where you can actually place it. And then you type in your, what you want. Tickets. There we go. And then I like to then just slowly sink it into the wall. And what you then have is uh, the sign that's sunk just enough into the wall. But because of the way that the, the signs work in the game, in the sense that they, they are actually slightly raised up by only a couple of pixels, but that couple of pixels is just enough to hide it behind. Um, so you then just go tickets like that. And then when you remove it, you now can't see the base of the sign. You just have writing on a wall. Um, so that's now, that's now coming together. Don't forget your other decorations. So if you're wanting to put in lights, then go ahead and put your lights in. Um, I'm sure we've got something that we could just quickly use. Uh, let's mix it up and go for the pirate lights, shall we? <laughs> let's go for a pirate light. Uh, and don't forget, well, you've got planters. Uh, so I think they're called uh, a planter. A planter. Uh, yeah, so you've got your planters that you can use down here. Like, like that. So you're now coming together with this really cool uh, ticket office. So you're going to want a desk uh, for somebody to sit at. So again, I just take a um, an art shape on this one, and I'm just going to grab one of the rectangles. I'm going to color it an appropriate color. Let's go for black on this one. Uh, turn my angle snap on, and there we go. Just put in some kind of a desk um, and then you've got if you've got access to them you have some sitting stuff so let's go for a businessman you'll need to find a chair for them to sit on by the way uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna go to that extreme uh, but you're gonna have some business people sitting down and there you go you've got some staff that are waiting to uh, waiting to actually see your uh, see your guests. So that's that's the real basics of a ticket office. Uh, let's move on to the next section. So let's kick this up a gear and let's actually start to introduce the makers toolkit and see just how much of a difference it makes. Uh, I'm not going to cover off the other stuff in this episode just so I can keep this episode as short as possible. I can go on forever as you already know uh, about all of this sort of stuff but we're just focusing in this episode on your tickets and your turn styles. So I've already downloaded a whole host as you know of theme makers toolkit items uh, and I've got three turn styles that are available um, but there are loads of turn styles on the workshop you just need to go ahead and choose your favorite ones. Uh, I love using this one it can be a bit difficult to place but uh, it's worth it I love I love this and if you download Raygate Lake by the way uh, you'll get this turnstile so I'm sorry I don't know who this is actually by um, but it's a great one anyway. So I'm just going to place this down here. Now remembering your width of your person, you just need to allow some kind of a width for uh, people to walk past. So that's two, uh, that's three, and that's 
four. So now I've got four down. I should be able to group them together. Edit the group and it should now copy in a nice straight line for me. There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same, but I'm only going to do six on this side because, of course, we need our disabled entrance. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use a theme makers toolkit gate for this one. So I'm going to use uh, is this this gate here. Yes, it's a, because it's an actual gate. Look, if you look on the uh, look on the side, you've actually got hinges that, that you can use. Um, so I'm going to have that hinged to that wall there. And I'm going to hinge it to there. Uh, actually, do you know what? I might need to get rid of that turnstile as well because of the space. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a beam. Uh, one of the, the custom beams. Uh, I think these these are Hydro specials. Um, see me use this so, so, so many times. Uh, and I'm just going to make sure then that my beam itself is attached to there we go it's attached to the hinge like that of course i need my wheelchair access sign so if i type in wheelchair uh, i should have my access sign there we go access like that um i'll tell you what i'm going to do i'm just going to move these across a little bit there we go uh, this bit here is a bit of a, an escape point, so I'm just going to grab another fence and put it in here. Uh, so let's go and grab our same star fence that we did for our disabled entrance. Uh, so there we go, just going to hide that inside the beam and then bring this down this way. Okay, so that's pretty much how the, how the turnstiles are going to look we now just need to kit out the rest around it so uh, i want to put a sign up so let's go for some custom letters um and again there are that's not how you spell letters uh, there are plenty of, of letters and fonts that are available on uh, the workshop i quite like these ones for my entrance so let's just go for um entrance so e <laughs> this is this is not a spectator sport. Uh, N T R A. This is when you spelt it. You realise you spelt it wrong. Uh, N C E. I'm just going to just realign realign this as well. There we go. Uh, okay, cool. Then copy this across so that we've got two sides like that. And now you've got yourself a really basic turnstile. So what you now do is you continue to use the techniques that we've already shown throughout the, uh, the other episodes. So in the maintenance area episode and the plaza area episode and the pathing and everything and you start to make it look good and it will eventually look like this theme makers toolkit really does make all of the difference and i've not used anything here that you've not seen in the other seven lessons there's no special techniques there's nothing that i've hidden you've seen me do it all before it's just this brings it to life and as i keep hammering home you're going to make these look way better than than i do here because this is just thrown together for a demonstration just to show you what the art of the possible is and so here we go this is this is all i've done so here are the turnstiles that we had from before um i've just given some detail around the, the disabled access to to make it a little bit more obvious uh, just put a couple of extra details like you know like lighting and a couple of windows and stuff in uh, i've used some fences at the beginning uh, at the front just for crowd control dotted around a couple of decorations because that's what you tend to find so you want the the entrance area this turnstile area to be as pleasant as possible um monetizing the area as much as you can so you've got a couple of vending machines and a couple of stalls there's your there's your phones um there's your toilets so all i've done there is i've just put a, a front to it like i say you can make it look however you want um i've just put a couple of doors in so it's not a gaping hole uh, that's what she said and also <laughs> a couple of signs just to split off the male and female toilets and the windows on toilets tend to be really really high you don't want people looking into the window um 
And then, of course, you want some kind of extractor fan to get rid of smells and ventilate the, the, the toilet and stuff. So the drain pipes are like, like I say, you've seen all of this. You've seen all of this already, but it just really does start to, to come to life in this area. So let's turn our affections then to our ticket office. Um, all I've done in advance of this bit. And they've just copied across the uh, the previous section, so um, we've just gone for the open window style. I've copied across all of the planters and, and, and all of that sort of stuff. So let's have a look at how Theme Maker's Toolkit then can uh, really make a difference in this office. So our guys, to start with, they're <laughs> sitting <laughs> on, on, on nothing. Uh, so we're going to need chairs. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a chair or two. So there are office chairs that are available. I've still got align to surface and snap on uh, there are office chairs that are available that that you can use and they fit perfectly i mean you have to sort of forgive the fact that they've got the the poles because they are effectively uh pieces you know scen scenery pieces right they're, they're not actually meant to be used in in this way so this is the squint trade-off as, as, as i call it uh, so let's just give them something to sit on there we go. Okay, so they're also going to need some kind of cash register um, because they they're going to be taking taking money, right? So there's there's a couple of cash registers that are available uh, on Theme Maker's Toolkit. There's this one that's just a touch screen, um, which looks cool if you're if you're short of space. Um, that looks cool. Or there's this bigger one that I use everywhere um, in all of my shops and stuff. I just love that it's so chunky. Uh, and you've got this one. I think this is I think this is a Geekism one. Um, this was one of the first ones that was that was actually freely available. So because we don't have a lot of space here, I'm actually going to go for the the little touchscreen ones. They're quite cool, quite modern. Um, so let's just go ahead and place these down. Now remember that remember from the nature episode, randomness is is the key to to realism. This is exactly the same principle. Um, not everything is going to be copied and paste job. They are going to be in different places, and people would be free to move these around to whatever's comfortable for them. Um, so you would find them in in all sorts of places, but don't make it too random. You don't want it to be messy. Uh, that that's the thing. Like, just be be careful where you be careful where you're placing them. So now we've done that. We're going to need card readers the other side because people will want to um, pay by card, right? So let's go for a card. I think it's a card reader. Yep, there's one there. Uh, so let's go ahead and place that uh, somewhere. I mean, we're just saying that this doesn't have any glass at the minute, so we can just go ahead and place these straight on the straight on the windowsill, right? Um, so like this, and then like this. Like this, uh, one there, and one there, and one there, and one there. Uh, so the next thing then, they're going to need some kind of computer, and um, they don't just work from tills, they'll have some kind of a, a ticketing system um, where they're going to need to use a PC. So let's just go ahead and give each one a PC of some capacity. And again, ran randomness is, is the key, but uh, you might decide to move a few things around. Did we? No, we didn't. Did we put these? No, we didn't. Uh, I'm just... I'm, st I'm struggling with the... There we go. With the hitbox of uh, that one. Okay, so just put the next PC in. Uh, next one there. And there. There and there. There and there. Okay. I mean, that's blocking the blocking the view and stuff, but you get the, you get the idea, right? Uh, so, because we've now made this um, an actual office space, you can see that this is going to now be far too big for their needs. But we're still accounting for two meters squared worth of workspace per person. But we've now got all of this space at the back of the office and. It's up to you, actually, whether you end up just making it smaller so that it's just a ticket office and there's 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 nothing there at all, or whether you do what I did in Raygate Lake and make this back area some kind of uh, some kind of office space. This now gives you this really cool partition wall that you can start doing some stuff with. So, for example, your ticket offices would have some kind of adverts for what's going on. Um, so I'm just going to put a couple of screens up. So let's just go for one, two, 
three. And then you've also got uh, the ability to then have some filing cabinets. So let's go ahead and find ourselves. Actually, I'm just going to call up my office tag that I've got. There we go. So I've got all of my office stuff already. Um, so my filing cabinet should be here. Uh, let's just go ahead and put a couple of these in. I need the snap on though. Uh, so like this. So a couple of filing cabinets. And you can see now that this is already starting to take uh, take the shape of an office. Um, we should probably decorate the walls. So you can use any of the panels that are in game. Um, if I'm going for a stark coloured wall, then I will tend to just use one of the uh, TMTK squares uh, because it just gives me the ability just to just to colour the wall, right? So uh, let's go for a really no, that's pink. Um, let's go for a dark red. I like a dark red. There we go like so and of course you need a floor so because we've I've copied across the the plaza and this is come into the into the ticket office so let's just put a floor in uh, so if I type in floor I'm gonna go for this wooden floor because I love this wooden floor I think it looks great um just reset the color and the rotation and bring this down and then like this and I'm just going to, I'm going to raise it up so it's above the brick. Uh, there we go. And I'm just going to make sure that it fits. So there we go. And then I can just copy this down. Like that. Like that. And like that and of course this office needs a door for you to get into so let's go ahead and put a door in um i'm just going to choose the same western door that i used over here which was this one i'm going to place that uh, there but i'm also going to remember as well that i need it the other side so even though the wall is going to be far too thick to have this door and you could find a way of recessing the door uh, like we've done here um, so the door is actually recessed into the wall. Um, you could do the same or you can just do, do the, the lazy way and just have a door either side. It completely depends on whether you're using the brick set that is really thick in game or if you're going to use custom walls where you're using windows as walls in which case you can then do uh, recessed way easier and way better. Um, again it just depends on the level of detail that, that you want to that you want to go in and so what you then do is you continue to uh, kit out this office as an office space using all of the techniques that we showed you in the maintenance side in the plaza area and your ticket office will eventually look like this so with just a little bit of patience and quite a lot of theme makers toolkit items you can come up with something that looks like this and this was thrown together in about 20 minutes and it already looks so vastly different but I've not used any techniques that I've not already shown you there's nothing hidden there's no pieces in places they shouldn't be it just looks completely different it now looks alive like I've thrown down the same fences that I used in front of the turnstiles and the same bins I've used elsewhere uh, this frontage is exactly the same all I've done is I've just put some trim on the roof just to bring it a bit to life and put a custom sign up instead of the main sign that was sunk into the brick but the difference the real difference is the scene behind it so now this whole thing has depth because we've built the office that sits behind it it's alive in the world and I say that quite a lot um, when I'm doing everything, that it has to feel alive in the world. It feels like there's an office space living behind this ticket office. People actually come to work here. And that's what really sets across that, that realism. And there are people out there that do some absolutely awesome office spaces and back of house spaces. And uh, Jeremy, I'm looking at you. Uh, and um, Yeah, so it's just all about bringing that office environment that really does come to life so let's let's take a tour shall we um again nothing nothing special has happened in here and i've not taken a great deal of care i've just made this representative of an office space all i've done is i've just thrown the squares 
all on the wall just to give it a bit of paint um and i've just chosen some different color schemes just to give it a bit of variation so it's just not a not a block uh i've just thrown down the vintage posters i love the vintage posters it, it sort of feels like it makes it feel like it's an office of a theme park um this is just an office space uh in real life i would actually have done different desks so the desks wouldn't be a copy and paste job but i just wanted to represent what this office space would would pretty much typically look like thrown down some shelves uh, a photocopier some more filing cabinets bit of plantage going around you know just to make it feel like it's a, a, bit, a bit of a nicer a nicer place to work uh, this side just a coffee machine a couple of bits of clutter a bin few boxes um the emergency exit sign of course it's it's needed along with the fire push point the ceiling i don't think i've introduced you to uh, but you can find this by searching ceiling um and it comes on a grid so this is this is ceiling b i think it is and then there's a ceiling a which has got round spotlights but it just it's cool as an office as an office ceiling um, you'll see me in other places use uh, sunk in box lights to the, the, these squares uh, works just as well if you want actual real life functioning light uh, but if you just want a, an office then this is this is pretty much pretty much it again we've you've already seen me how i've how i've built this and i've not completely finished it right it's all supposed to be just representative of what you can do there would be all the other stuff and, and whatever around and then I've also just kitted out and just cluttered out this area as well. So this is customer facing. So you'd want it to be fun and vibrant and you'd fill it full of merchandise and adverts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, posters that you can find on ThingMakers Toolkit. There's some brilliant ones. KPR does some amazing uh, posters that you can use of all sorts of stuff. Again, I've used those in Fundy Fun Spot quite a lot. Um, but just like loads of trinkets and things to do with the park and adverts on the screens and that and that sort of stuff but it's all of those real small details that make it just come to life in the background and now it feels like it's a proper proper ticket office and you can still achieve this by the way by not using theme makers toolkit so please don't think that just because you're either a console player or you're a brand new player to this that you can't achieve this you can build shells out of planks you can build shells out. well you see me do a desk out of uh, the art shapes and you can put things on there you know you've got um the candy pieces you've got smaller trinkety type pieces you've got gems that come with the adventure set and all of that sort of stuff they can all come together to make things on shelves and you can build filing cabinets using the the same method that i did with the uh, turnstile you can use the cuboid art shapes so like you still got accessibility it's just theme makers talk it is more detailed because it's because it's custom right so that brings us quite nicely to the end of this episode actually this is uh what we've done i've just put these side by side so you can see the real difference um and i know that like we did a real quick job on on the turnstiles and they look pretty awesome if you're still just using basic but then you can really bring it to life with theme makers toolkit so i've put those side by side so that so you can just see but you know it looks like it's probably something from silver dollar city it's, it's kind of what we've ended up ended up with here it looks nice it looks it looks good and and guys thank you so 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 much for for watching this episode it really does mean a lot to me like especially those of you that get to this point in an episode the end um so let me know in the comments below what you think of this let me know what you what you want the next topics to be on because there's plenty more to talk about and as you know i like to talk so uh, <laughs> if you want to know when the next episode comes out then you know what to do please subscribe to the channel it really really does help we're on the grind to a thousand and and at a thousand we rmc the wooden coaster in uh reggae lake and i can't wait to do that it's gonna be so much fun uh but of course thank you so much until we speak again you know what to do please look after yourselves please keep safe take care bye bye